Hey everyone, Yukin here. Uh, in this video we're going to be doing a character review and guide on Amon. Um, to start off with, his leader skill is the best one in the game for light units. Uh, it is a flat 40% uh, attack increase to light allies. Uh, this is pretty amazing. That's going to be I, probably the best one that we'll be getting for light or dark. Um, Nyx has a similar uh, leader skill, uh, but she requires an all dark team um, to give the 40% attack. Uh, Amon is a tank. Uh, he's more of an offensive tank, though, in that uh, with his first passive, uh, he applies a 30% damage increase um, buff to the entire team uh, whenever he has Revelation Signet up. Um, he also has, uh, when he has Revelation Signet up, um, he'll have a 40% increase evade chance and accuracy. Um, this is pretty significant. Uh, he doesn't have a shield like most other um, tanks. He doesn't have a damage immunity shield, so the evasion is kind of his replacement for that. So that's just a chance that he just doesn't take damage. Um, it's He's also kind of trading off the damage increase for all allies um, for the loss of utility in that he can't provide a damage immunity shield for all allies like most other tanks can. Um, but if you're running him and you want damage, this is the tank to go with, uh, absolutely. Um, his second passive, uh, has a high chance for him to go first at the start of the wave. Uh, this is very good for arenas in combination with his third skill. Um, he activates resolve for the first ally that takes fatal damage. Um, this can only occur once per battle, uh, but essentially anyone who takes fatal damage, uh, it'll prevent them from dying, it'll restore them to 50% HP, and also give them a 50% attack buff for two turns. Um, the resolve does stay on for a turn, so until that character actually takes a turn, uh, they won't be able to die. Uh, they'll just stay at one health uh, if someone tries to kill them again. Um, which is, again, very powerful effect, very similar to um, Leafa's passive uh, resolve effect um, with the one turn duration where they just can't die until they actually take their next turn. Um, this is very good as kind of a anti uh, no revive mechanic, uh, especially against like Morrigans with their third skill. Um, she uses that on the enemy, they just won't die, they'll re be restored to 50% health, and you can't kill them until they take a turn again. By that time, a Ramu or a Ru might have uh, reduced that duration or removed it. Um, so that's very useful for that. Uh, his first skill is a single target taunt. Um, because it is single target, he's going to have that 45% base chance to taunt. Uh, and it applies the Revelation Signet to him, which activates this passive for the 40% evasion and accuracy, um, and the damage increase to the entire team. So pretty powerful effect. Um, when max skilled, uh, the taunt chance goes to 65% for two turns, um, which kind of, you're going to want that maxed for all tanks. Though I would probably prefer to max out uh, his third skill first, um, which makes him, in combination with his second passive, for the high chance, uh, this should be 80% chance uh, for him to go first at the start of the wave uh, in combination with this skill. So it inflicts penetration damage equal to 180% of attack to one enemy and casts Engraving of Destruction for two turns. Um, what Engraving of Destruction does is if the enemy uses their third skill, they'll take 100% of their health and damage. Uh, this is similar to Ezna's Mental Seal effect, uh, but with the caveat that it's um, more specific. It's not just any action besides defending, it's 
anytime they use their third skill specifically. Um, so this is important that he goes first, which he gets from that passive uh, potentially. Uh, so he can apply that to a key unit um, to kind of guarantee that if they take an action or if they use their third skill, uh, they'll just die. Um, this can be negated by effects like uh, damage immunity shields uh, or damage absorption shields. Um, if Kane has his passive up, uh, he'll actually heal 100% of his health instead. Um, and Sid, Electra, any tanks that um, have the damage immunity shields can negate this. Um, if they have an HP shield, um, it should do damage to the HP shield. So if their total health is above 100% with the HP shield, uh, they won't die to this. Um, so those are some ways to kind of counter that mechanic, besides just not using the third skill when you have the debuff up. Um, this also deals the same amount of damage to the two adjacent enemies uh, to your target. Um, and it has a only a 50% chance to uh, apply the Engraving of Destruction to them for two turns. Um, when max, that increases to 80% chance for three turns, and the main target 100% chance for three turns. Um, so if you're using him primarily for arenas, this is the skill you're going to want to max first, just for that Engraving of Destruction effect. Uh, so if he goes first and he uses this, uh, that's and it applies to all the three enemies. Um, if they use their third skills, which the AI probably will, um, that's just half the team that's dead, or more than half the team that's dead. Um, so very powerful effect. Um, and then his second skill uh, inflicts damage equal to 80% of attack to all enemies, a 40% chance to taunt all enemies for two turns. Um, very powerful taunt effect. Uh, this is what he gets kind of in replacement of the uh, damage immunity shields to the entire team that a lot of other tanks have, like Electra or Cordelia. Um, the, it also applies his um, Revelation Signet, which procs this passive for the 30% damage to all allies and the evasion and accuracy buff um, and then also gives all allies a guaranteed chance to counterattack one time for two turns so what this means is for each ally as long as they're attacked within their next two turns um, the first time they're attacked they're guaranteed to counter strike um, this is very powerful effect for like Tayo especially um, potentially Christian uh, would work very well with this as well um, to kind of get his uh, a chance to apply his crit chance buff from his first skill. Um, Nemesis would be another good uh, unit to run this with uh, for that 100% counter strike um, that first time um, to potentially get that no revive proc out. Um, but again, overall, uh, he has a very powerful kit. Um, he is a tank. So what I'm probably going to build him with is uh, HP, H uh, either double HP in defense or double defense in HP set. Um, the, let me see, where's my rune box? Um, I'm probably going to go triple HP for the first two slots. Um, so like this rune would be a really good rune for him. So triple HP for the first two slots with um, as much Counter-Strike um, as possible on the um, third, fourth, and fifth slot. Um, all, the, all three of these slots can roll Counter-Strike. So this one, um, HP, Counter-Strike, Multi-Strike uh, for third slots, um, Counter-Strike or Multi-Strike for um, the fourth slot, uh, counter strike here um, on the fifth slot. Um, if you're going to be running them in arenas, you don't want HP recovery. 
so maybe um, attack as another stat. Um, same thing here uh, on the fourth slot. You really don't want HP recovery uh, for units like Kane that uh, would potentially proc their passives. Um, so yeah, and then lastly here you're going to be going for um, either multi-strike, uh, triple multi-strike for getting those taunts off, um, especially in PvE. Um, if in PvP, uh, I would probably still recommend multi-strike just to get that increased chance to get uh, more attacks out um, for more taunts. Um, you could go evasion on um, for him, but it's probably not something that I'm going to be building personally. Um, mainly just because he's get he's getting 45% evasion just with his passive up. You really don't need it all that much higher. Um, I'd rather get the counter strike to make him more consistent as a tank. Uh, the more times he can attack back. Uh, whenever he's getting attacked, which as a tank, that's what you want him to be doing, uh, to get attacked. And then if he attacks back again, especially if he has his first skill maxed, that would be a 60 or 65% chance to taunt for two turns. Um, you can effectively keep an enemy taunted uh, for most of the fight, potentially. Um, so that's why personally I'm going to be running Counter-Strike on him. Uh, as I do with most of my tanks um, for that. Uh, but yeah. Um, is there a cap on evasion? I'm not sure. The counter strike and multi strike caps and crit chance cap is 75%. Uh, barring effects like um, Amon's, where he just gives you a guaranteed counter. Um, so the effect from his second skill actually gives you 100% chance to counterattack um, because it is a guaranteed counterattack. So they'll actually break past the counter cap um, for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my guide for Amon. Um, if you enjoyed the video, uh, I stream on Twitch uh, during the week, generally starting around 7 p.m. Uh, EST. Um, I will be posting the link to my Twitch channel uh, in the video description. Thank you.